Center, the Graduate Center CUNY in Midtown Manhattan in uh, New York City. It's a rainy day, um, a bit colder. We had, uh, especially after the elections, incredible uh, temperatures here, summer days where we were all celebrating, it was over 70 Fahrenheit, uh, 23, 24 grad Celsius, and now um, reality, in a way, is uh, setting in. Um, we, are, we are still in the aftermath of the election, and uh, today, um, Many people say uh, for the first time was called a humanitarian crisis of the COVID situation here in the U.S. Doctors Without Borders are actually focusing on the U.S. Um, as a country in crisis. It's uh, shocking and also the loss, of course, of leadership or the non-existing one. And um, we are, um, as the Native American company Spider Woman told us, um, uh, we are in a creational myth where we have a mad leader. Uh, the country has the plague. Uh, there's wars going on around the world and uh, people are starving and uh, we have to find a way out of this. We have to find a way. Uh, we are condemned to hope, uh, as uh, Rabbi, our guest said about Salah Vanus, a playwright. You know, we ho hope this all will, will work out. Vaccines information are good, but it is a, a time of uncertainty, a time that perhaps the West as we know, it has never experienced uh, or not in a long, long time since World War II, and it's a most serious moment. We do believe that in times like this, the work of artists and what they have to say to us is more important than ever. If it doesn't count now, when will it ever count? If it's not important now, when should we ever listen? So we do need to hear from artists next to the politicians and virologists and economic advisors because it is down to what our lives is all about, where we come from, where we are at the moment, where we are going to. We need uh, better questions. We need to explore. We need to think. And uh, this is why we have been talking since March to theater artists. And uh, we have to listen to them. They are on the right side of history, as you always say, on the right side, on the complex struggle for freedom. And um, they have answers in their daily practices, and they are so connected, I think, to uh, the moment, but also often anticipate a future and uh, help us to create meaning and to get, get accustomed to it. With us today, we have uh, one of the great artists uh, world, in the world, in the field of theater performance, but also in the visual arts. There's uh, Rabbi Murray, who is uh, from Lebanon, living in Berlin at the moment. It's a great honor to have him here with us uh, is a big deal. And what he has to say is significant and it is important. And a co-host, we have for the first time have one here, we have the great and brilliant Carol Martin from um, NYU, who uh, is a professor of theater. Her work on the theater of the real, a term she kind of created or reinforced, uh, um, like Hans Dies Lehmann's post-traumatic theater. She, made a contribution to the field about uh, uh, an, an, an aspect of contemporary work in theater important that is very, very significant, very important that I think in the last decades is the one that is growing as much perhaps as site and site specific, but still I think it's something of uh, perhaps even greater um, um, significance, the engagement with the real, the political, the search for truth and how theater and performance can be an arena of open discussions. So um, my name is Frank Henschke. I'm the director of the Siegel Center, and um, we would like to thank HowlRound again for hosting us, uh, for making this happen. And uh, I'll hand over to uh, Carol now. Carol will give us um, a short overview, a little bit on the field, on that term, the theater of the real, why it is significant, why we have to keep that in our mind, and also for us to understand the reality we live in in the moment. And then she will talk a bit about Rabi. But uh, Rabi, first of all, also says hi there in Berlin. Um, I think it's uh, uh, six o'clock uh, in the evening somewhere there. So welcome uh, and for uh, our talks here. And uh, we'll come to you soon. But Carol, give us a little overview. So thank you, Frank. Thank you very, very much. And welcome, Rabi. Um, I'm so happy you're with us, Rabi. Uh, I followed Ribier's work as much as possible. Um, I have seen it in Warsaw and Paris and Berlin and the US and New York City. Um, but first, before I uh, characterize a, a selection of his work, because it's a vast body of work, both theater and installation, um, I just want to make a few remarks about Theater of the Real. 
So um, the the term or the phrase here, the real, really signifies a variety of methods um, and uh, uh, a different nomenclature that describes ostensibly different methodology, documentary theater built from documents, verbatim theater built from verbatim interviews, reality-based theater, more generally theater of fact, theater that aims to locate and perform facts, theater of witness that aims to um, uh, state uh, implicitly and explicitly, we are here, we are watching, we have seen this tribunal theater which is a um, kind of public legal reckoning in many instances, nonfiction theater. There are um, in the United States uh, restored village performances which attempt to reenact um, different moments in history or different, um, different uh, entire villages and war and battle reenactments and of course autobiographical theater and um, Theater of the Real, I think, uh, is an umbrella term that embraces all of those and sees them in conversation with one another, although in very, very different kinds of ways. So overall, I think there's been a shift from definitive representation of real events to representation that is somehow more indeterminate, um, that doesn't complete the story that is told that questions its own sources and ability to draw definite conclusions. Theater that mixes fact and fiction or the real with the fiction. And this is where Rabie Nure comes in. Since uh, 1985, Rabie has been making work that he calls semi-documentary. Um, uh, and um, he's made in a series of extraordinary theater works and installations, several of which have been in collaboration with Vina Sene. An early work, um, Three Posters, which I think was 2000, year 2000, was made in collaboration with the poet and essayist Elias Correa. And Three Posters um, is a work about um, uh, that uses uh, the martyr video of Jamal Sati, a, combat a combatant for the National Resistance Front in Lebanon. And so martyr videos are a kind of um, determined genre, which have a number of specific features. And the same work also used a kind of facsimile of a martyr video played by Rabia. Um, and it's this intermingling of fiction with reality in his work um, that in this particular work led the audience to question everything that followed. Um, in Rabi's work, words, over the course of the performance, we hope to convince an audience that recognized the actor through the use of repetition, especially of the sentence, quote, I am the martyr, close quote, that the performer could eventually be the martyr. Um, and the work asks several questions, but two in particular, how did the secular resistance against the Israeli occupation end up becoming a fundamentalist Islamic movement under the aegis of Hezbollah? And why did the resistance of the left fail? So I, at least from my outside vantage point, understand these questions as being questions of, of a younger generation asking what, what's happened to our culture, what's happened to our society, what's happened to our country. And this particular work um, uh, is, I think, instrumental conceptually to Rabier's subsequent work. It poses questions within the work itself it poses questions about the relationship between fiction and reality. It perhaps proposes that playing a role is related to becoming the role, that the rehearsals of theater have real world consequences. And I think we've seen some of this in 
uh, some of Milo Rao's thinking about theater and the way he stages his works, that theatricality itself can be an inquiry into political reality, and um, and and the and the you know very 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 important question of sanctioned sources of information, and I think Rabier was one of the first, if not the very first, uh, artists to really to call into question the kind of you know, what the internet, how the internet and the omnipresence and proliferation of, of endless flurries of information is shaping and unshaping the realities in which we live. Um, looking for a missing employee, the missing employee, 2005, is the story of the civil servant, Rafat Suleiman, who went missing. This is um, Rabi and Nina Sene's work. They use half lies, invented truth, newspaper clips, diary entries, found objects and propaganda to make a work that is exactly about how the flurries of reportage can evade truth um, and never create a definitive picture. So certainly everyone today is familiar with that. Um, the pixelated revolution is a, a, an amazing forensic analysis of the images that Syrian protesters uploaded to the internet and uh, provocative commentary on the aesthetics of post 9-11 warfare and revolution. And um, that was performed in New York in 2012 as part of the Coil Festival. And I believe, Rabia, you were brought here uh, on the occasion of having won the Yoko Ono Award. Um, so that was, uh, uh, I think, one of the only times that you performed in New York. And then um, I just want to mention an installation work, which is different than the others, 33 rounds per minute and then some, which I actually saw in Warsaw, is an installation performance about the final days of Dia Yamut, a young man living in Berlin. So there are no actors in this work. On stage is a table, two chairs, a television, an answering machine, a mobile phone, um, a computer open to a Facebook page. This is such, I, I love this work. It's such a fabulous work. And all these devices shape and vibrate and announce things about Yamut, who has apparently committed suicide. So this is someone's personal room. It's a table and all their digital devices, they're gone, but they live on in, in this vibrating digital reality. Um, so overall, I think the work reveals some of the reverberations of post-Arab Spring. Um, and the, the most clear uh, utterance of this is when um, the host of an investigative show that's on the television in Yamut's room asks, starting with Boazizi in Tunis, who decided to immolate himself? Is there connection with Yamut's actions? Is there a stand? against whom, close quote. That's from the, the work. And by implication going forward, should we all understand all suicides in the Arab world as acts against the state, the work act? So um, Rabia's work is profoundly political, profoundly strategic, and, um, and is also an inquiry into theater itself, what it does, what it can't do. Um, a critique of the very notion of documentary, a call to ask for very sophisticated relationships to information and to te technology. Um, so I think I, I personally would characterize Rabier's interpretive intentions as being much less about literal truth, proving what happened, and actually not about that specifically at all, and more about a kind of self-conscious use of materials to question the conventions of representation, conventions of theater, the um, to to make us rethink how we come to know and understand things in very profound ways. So, on a little bit lighter note, although um, so I, I have to say also that Rabier is a consummate actor. Um, Lola Arias called him the master of the performed lecture form, but he is also really a fabulous actor. And he did star in a film that always kind of thrills me with Catherine Deneuve and the title of the film is I Want to See in which they go on a journey um, in the Lebanese landscape. 
and the, the film, like uh, like the rest of Rabier's work, is crossed between documentary and fiction, <clears throat> and, and it, it shows the aftermath of the 2006 Lebanon War. So even though Rabi's passion and subject is is Lebanon, um, there he he takes that subject and kind of makes a I don't know a, a geodesic dome out of it and and spins it and we all have to keep looking both at Lebanon and about how particularly events in Lebanon are refracted in the rest of the world. So Frank, I'll let you ask the first question. Yeah, <laughs> let me thank you first for this. It's really so touching. Thank you so much, Carol, and Frank also for inviting me to be with you. No, no, no. For first, before asking the question, where are you now, and what time is it? Me. Yeah. I'm in Berlin yeah. now, and it's six something. I don't know. We started at six uh, time Berlin time. Six o'clock in Berlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, right. um, really, um, thank you for for being here with us and um, and your work on the trauma of the Middle East on war is so such an engaging um, dialogue, yeah. research of it. Right. Um, the very beginning of your work, you know, you you talked or connected to the Hakavati, the the Arab storytelling where people also sit on a chair or stand and tell stories. You do your lectures. Often you say it's not a performance, it's a lecture. Are you are you a, a storyteller in that tradition? Often people say there is no theater anywhere in the Arab world. Uh, of course, it's such a complete misunderstanding. We at the Siegel Center have published so many Arab plays. We're actually the largest publisher of Arab plays. And Marvin Carlson often has pointed that out, you know, that this history goes back for thousands of years. So are you? Are you a Hakavati storyteller of the 21st century? Uh, this is, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe yes and no at the same time. Uh, just to say like a few words about the, the, uh, the, the traditional uh, Hakavati that we knew about since, since the late century and before uh, is that uh, there's a big difference actually. I'm just uh, out tuning myself to, to this. Uh, Hakawati, uh, let's say like theater hmm, uh, is like almost relatively is a new uh, medium in the Arab world. Uh, it started in the late 19th century, like relatively new, accordingly to relatively to the Europe, to, to other countries where like there is tradition of theater, like India or whatever. And we always struggling, all the theorists and theater makers are struggling to find other forms of, of theatrical tendencies just before, before like in the ancient uh, times to prove that we have theater, but in a different way. And Hakawati is one of these forms, one of these structures. It has like a, a sort of uh, uh, performativity and the theater, but let's say like theater is like the, the, the baby or like the born of, uh, of the cities. And the Hakawati is not, with the cities, the Hakawati, the traditional Hakawati. It's actually like all, most of the Hakawatis are coming from a communitarian, familial, tribal uh, society. And usually they always talk about heroic uh, stories, heroic uh, people uh, about, uh, uh, about victories uh, and mainly also they attack the cities. The city is something that is danger for, uh, for the family, for the gathering, for the community. So the, 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 the city is like, it's where the viruses are coming, where the disease is coming against the community. So like in this sense, uh, I'm, I'm for sure I'm not Hakawati in this sense. 
I'm, 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 I'm the, the child of the city. I'm from the city. I born in the city. And I believe in, uh, in the individuals, in the civil rights. Uh, I'm not so much with the blood uh, relations. Uh, so uh, in this sense, like I am Hakawati. I tell stories, but actually to make my audience not one mass, not a community, actually to, to try to accentuate individualism, to make them individuals, to make each one of the audience to think and have has her or his opinion and uh, her or her, his uh, uh, intervention. So it's not about uh, unite, uniting the community or like the society or what. So in this sense, no, I'm not Hakawati. And at the same time, I'm Hakawati because sometimes, yeah, it's the same format or uh, yeah, it has the same format in a way, but in a different way. Like the story is different. I talk about uh, our failures. I talk, I talk about our doubts about our defeats. I don't, I don't talk about victories. I don't, we don't have victories in, in our region. We, we all the time facing uh, <laughs> a wall, like facing something that is blocking our visions. So how come we, we talk about victories? It's like Hezbollah talks about victories. Religious talks about victories, communities, uh, tri tribals. Thank you. Carol. So how do you how do you move from that notion of failure, of doubt, of defeat to uh, to making theater, which even when the subject matter is tragic, it is maybe, I'd have to think more about this, but inherently it's it's a positive enterprise it says that look we can look at this we can do this and we will have a positive outcome in doing that even when we're looking closely at something tragic yeah actually uh, uh, one of the one of the things that we faced uh, immediately it was during and immediately after the the civil war ended the fighting ended of the civil war mm -hmm. in 1990 is that we were like uh, uh, we, we were like facing a lot of uh, uh, problematics one of them uh, a lot of uh, journalists a lot of uh, curators, uh, theater directors, that they want us to tell them about the war, about what we experienced. So they wanted us actually to tell the horror of the wars, what, uh, what our suffers was. And, and to be honest, there was like a, a bunch of artists that we are like friends. We were meeting a lot together. And the others, we, we did not meet with them, but we were like conscious about this problem that actually we should not fall into this trap to tell what happens to us. Because this actually calls uh, sympathy, calls like uh, people to be pity with us. And we don't need this. What we need actually a reflection if to think about what we have passed to, to analyze, to auto-criticize what we have done uh, during these years. So uh, the, all the artworks, uh, what we have done uh, was focused on thinking about the war, not telling the war. And this is actually shift the whole concept of what and how to do an artwork or a theater piece. When you say like, I want to think about the war, not to tell the war, it's a completely different issue. And this is actually uh, something that uh, demands from the artist and from the theater maker uh, capacity to, to provoke oneself, 
hmm? Uh, to, to attack and to criticize yourself, not the audience, not the others, and to demand from yourself a lot uh, of things. Uh, so this was the main key uh, of how to shift from, uh, from drama or, like, or, or theater that tells the suffering and the horror into a theater which analyze and think and reflect upon uh, sensitive topics, like, for example, the one that you mentioned, three posters uh, about the martyrdom and uh, martyrs from the Communist Party. Right, right. Well, how did audiences respond initially to this? Uh, it's freezing. How sorry. did, oh, sorry. Sorry, how it's fine, audience... it was freezing. A little bit. Now we're fine. Okay. okay. So how did audiences respond initially to this invitation to, to think, to analyze, um, to, uh, to take responsibility? Uh, I think it was, uh, with my experience, it was amazingly uh, very good uh, because like, uh, Like it put the people in 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 position they have to think each one greatly and to have the conversation, the dialogue. So it's not something that you say uh, and you tell, and then you need like an agreement or a disagreement. <laughs> So it's not about this. It's not posing a questions that needs uh, an answer of yes or no. It's not about this. It's about doubts, about, as you, as you mentioned, it's about unfinished uh, stories, a story that is full of gaps, a story that is uh, nonlinear, that you have to put it in your mind, uh, representations that are done by words. Uh, which makes each one of the audience responsible to create her or his image in his imagination or her imagination in your mind. So it, it, it gives like a lot of freedom to interpret, uh, a lot of freedom to, to put your input, to you put in your intervention. And this is actually was successfully good. Uh, uh, in my experience in Lebanon and outside Lebanon, even outside Lebanon, because the questions becomes like not necessarily uh, uh, specifically addressed to the local uh, situation, even like if the foreign audience will miss nuances uh, from, the, from our uh, history, but even though they can make associations with with their own histories and try with their own experience and try to, um, to to reflect upon this from their point of view from their own experience and this is was really uh, great uh, for, and we never heard like something like sympathy like someone like say like oh i feel with you i'm, I'm in solidarity with you no no it's not about solidarity it's not about Sympathy is not about pity. It's not about like gaining uh, uh, voices. I'm not. We are not making elections to to gain more uh, voices and voting. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's something that I share with the audience. We share with the audience ideas, thoughts, doubts, uncertainties, uh, questions that they have to think about with us so we we think all together and this is the important yeah uh, you oh, frank, the microphone. we cannot hear you frank oh sorry um just as a question um you you use the internet uh, spits from it you collect photos you take photos um you take found materials why don't you write a play? Why do, why do you think this is not working in a play? Why do you choose to also have an installation or drawings as part of it? What, what is, why do you make these choices? Uh, 
I'm sorry, I, I wrote a lot of plays. <laughs> I, I always write plays. It's, uh, it's oh. my, my... No, no, it's like uh, uh, Carol mentioned a uh, lot of them. They are based on, uh, on, on events and true events. The, the, the difference actually uh, between like, uh, let's say like a play in a in a classical uh, way yeah. of writing or like mm. when I'm writing, which, uh, which some people would love to uh, name it, label it as semi-documentary or documentary theater or whatever. For me, I, I write theater, I'm, I playwright and I write theater plays. Uh, and like the difference is like, it's a genre. It's you, you choose the genre, like there is a, a different, uh, genre in, in, uh, in, in art or in, in theater or in movies. So documentary is one of the, gen of the genres. Uh, but what I do all the time is that I reveal uh, a lot of things. Uh, as uh, Carol uh, mentioned in her, uh, her amazing introduction about my work, is that I actually am always uh, mixing fiction and real together. So the facts and the, and the fiction uh, are intermingled together. And it's not about cheating the audience. It's just like to underline what is history, how we write history. And what is also fiction? What is fiction? Fiction also inside the fiction, uh, whatever fiction, the science fictions, uh, those like related to the space or whatever, they are based also on, 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 on uh, real experiences, on uh, real stories, but they are hidden. Fiction take from real life and they hide them. They hide their uh, material. Documentary, they reveal their materials, but they actually have a pretentious sometimes to say that we are based on a true facts and what we say is really true, and we are objective. Fiction, they say, no, we are fiction, etc. but they are hiding their sources in a way. Uh, what I do, actually, I, I use both in, in, in a simple word. I have no, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't prefer this uh, on that, like, or rather this or that. I, 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 it depends on the work uh, and I do the work uh, on this, but I always reveal my mechanisms. I reveal my, uh, the way of, uh, the ways you, you do things, you reveal it, you, you give hints to the audience that, okay, now I'm, I'm showing you uh, a, videos from the Syrian revolution, for example, but I'm going to deconstruct it and, and then I put myself, so be careful, this is something that I'm, I'm dealing with it in my experience. So it's, it's mixed. Huh? So in this sense, uh, it's not about cheating the audience again uh, to tell them that, oh, uh, fiction, this is not fiction, this is real, this is real, no, oh, this is fiction, not real. No, it's to tell that history actually is constructed, is written out of subjectivity and objectivity, out of fiction and re or reality together. And we have actually to take it on ensemble. We, it's very dangerous when we try to distinguish what is true and what is untrue. What is fiction and what is non-fiction? It's really very dangerous. I think it's more relevant and more interesting to analyze uh, a phenomena or like something like Trump as a reality by itself. Not to say like he's saying lies or like uh, he is a uh, uh, madman or whatever, <laughs> whatever. No, to say like, why he is saying like this? What is behind this? I want to believe him, but why he is saying this and now? And then we can understand a lot of, of the discourse, the political discourse, his agenda, what is behind this? 
And he is very clever. He's, I think he is using this as a strategy to gain also people because like it's, it's also his ways uh, to, to, to do politics. So instead of refusing and say like he's mad or like he's lying or like he's like this conspiracy theory playing in his mind, etc. Instead of this, let's say like, okay, he's telling the truth. He's, but what is behind this? Why he is telling this? Let's analyze this. Let's listen to him and see what he wants to tell us behind this. And then we will discover a lot of things. And this is my proposition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, I, I love the, I, I, I think I write theater is more accurate than I write plays. Because if I write plays connotes a playwright in a room, you know, writing a text with then actors elsewhere, you know, have some kind of loyalty to, that you are writing uh, theater and I, I agree. Actually, we've published some of those texts in TDR and you can read them and understand them as theater. But deep in the writing is, or married to the writing is the theatricality of how they're going to be staged. So, um, so I, I love that phrase, uh, going forward, I write theater. <laughs> um, but, you know, this, this, so what you just described is what I was, you know, what I've been thinking about for a long time, that, you know, the difference between uh, creating a work that says this is what really happened or creating a work that has all this indeterminacy in it. At the same time, if there is perhaps a danger in saying, well, no, we don't really know what's true, because then, and we can't know what the truth is, then don't you think become more vulnerable to um, to uh, dictators and people who are master manipulators of the media? We never can, if we're convinced that the truth is somehow not able to be located unknown, then don't yeah. we become very vulnerable in our daily and political realities. Yeah, I, I agree with you about this matter. But I have to insist that uh, art is not a place, it's not a platform for political agendas. This means that activism is not in the artwork. If I want to activate something, it's just like to activate people to think with me. And this is a big issue. It's not to, to convince my audience in my theater pieces about any political idea, about any even philosophical idea, except of let's think and think and think and think. And that's it. Of course, like when I'm insisting on thinking, it doesn't mean that we don't feel as the same, at, the, as, at the same time. This, we cannot also separate feeling from thinking. It's like come also together. But what I mean that when, when I say like in my theater, I answer, I, I put questions. It means that it's a question that I don't have answers for them. Really, I don't have answers. Otherwise, they are not questions. They, uh, they are like uh, subliminal messages or like the answer is under the table and I'm like manipulating the audience to, 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 to answer the answer that I would love to, to hear. Huh? And this is actually the role of the politicians, of activists. And I'm not against politics, to be clear. I'm not ag against activism. I'm an activist in my life, but not in my theater work, not in my artworks. This is, I can separate them. In my artwork, in my theater, I have to attack myself, my beliefs. I have to provoke myself. I have to attack my beliefs, to put myself into questions. And this is something not easy. I'm saying it, but it's not easy. And I don't say that I'm, I'm succeeding in doing this. I'm just, I say, this is my ambition. I want to, to, to betray myself in my theater pieces, 
to betray my beliefs, even the artistic uh, uh, <laughs> tendencies. I want to betray them. Like I don't want to have a methodology in my in my artwork or in my theater to follow. I want each time I do a theater piece, I would love to betray it and to break it and to, to go to something else. And this is, to be honest, not easy. But I, I fight for this. And this is why also in my, in my artworks, in my, in my theater, I don't hide my political position. I say it clearly. I say like, I'm from this political side, but this is not the issue. It's not, I'm not here to convince you of this. I'm here because I have something else to share with you, questions. And this is what is important for me. So I hope I answer this, uh, yeah. this thing because I, 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 I agree with you. It's like, we cannot like be like in the world, like in this uh, lost, like, and we don't know what is true and what is not true. But I say like in art, it's the place where we have to discuss, where we have to, to put this uh, trial, the, the, the perpetrator and the victims and put them like really in an equal level. And this is very hard, very harsh, unacceptable sometimes. And to give the voice for each of them. And this is, uh, this is what I try to do. And I, I don't know if I'll do it well or not, but I try to do it. You do do it well. Um, so you, you <laughs> after um, it was looking for the missing employee that you performed as part of Lola Arias's, uh, 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 share, share your documents um, in the spring. And after that, you sent me this beautiful work in progress, very, very short about a family appearing and disappearing. Um, so I'm wondering, uh, are you working on that now? What are you thinking about now? Where are you going with your ideas at this moment in time? Uh, like there's a, a lot of ideas about today, uh, what we got, are going through. Uh, but to be honest, it's something that we are, we were already thinking about before the Corona uh, the crisis, before we had it. We have this, and we worked on it. We had, we have all the questions. It started with the social media, with the new technologies, the development of it, which was really very fast, and we were trying to catch what's going on with the technologies today, especially with the social media this platform that uh, like permitted for everyone to participate and to, to be journalist, to be artist, to be, uh, to be a writer, to be whatever, like you publish, uh, you do whatever you want uh, in, in, this, uh, the, in the internet. And this is amazing. And, and these are questions that really started to, uh, to to, to come to me uh, very, very long, long time ago. Uh, <laughs> so what happened today in the Corona time actually is that it was, it pushed us to the extreme, all the world. We were all pushed to the extreme and we were also in the corner now and we were obliged to think about it, but it was before. Uh, we were in a way in, in uh, living in, in solitudes or, or loneliness uh, before, before now. Uh, we were like all the time uh, uh, spending a lot of time with our little screens and the smartphones on the laptop, on the iPads, spending a lot of time of every day, like uh, in daily basis. Uh, so like the, 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 the corona pushed us to the extreme and put us in, into question, questioning this, especially performing arts in dance, theater, music, uh, and other, other uh, things. 
so one of the questions like uh, that comes to us is that uh, that what what about the body now how we go out like now we go out without our bodies actually now instead of preparing my body instead of <laughs> of, of doing exercises to to be like uh, on the on the stage with a good form now actually i prepare my image i i i and this is what i was doing now i was preparing my image so we go out with with an image of our bodies with an image now we prepare our image to go out and when we go out it's the image of part of our body also our body is fragmented so it's like it's a part of our body so all these are questions to think about like what what that means and this is a question that came to me long time before corona how we do theater uh, with the absence of the body so the the body is not dead it's absent and there's a difference between when we talk about the absence of the body or the death of the body, it's not the death of the body. It's not the death of theater. It's the absence of theater. Mm -hmm. And the absence of theater, it means that it's, it's invisible or it is here, but we cannot see it. And this is actually the whole concept of absence. The absent is someone invisible, but liable to come back. And the absent is someone who, or something that will allow us to imagine, to create, and to 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 to, to put fictions and to imagine, uh, and and to to do a lot of things. But it's always liable to come back. It's the promise to come back, and this is very important. So now there is the absence of the body, and how we can do theater with the absence of the body. One of, uh, of the experiences that we have done is uh, 33 uh, RPM and a few seconds, where like we did a theater piece, and I'm sorry, Carol, I insist that it's a theater piece, not installation performance. Installation, okay. <laughs> it's a theater piece proposing that we can do theater uh, without actors or with the absence of actors. So the actor promising to come back. It's, it's not that we should do theater without actors, but it's a possibility opens to us. And Corona uh, pushes us now to think about all these issues today, like uh, about these issues, like to, to talk about also to think about our senses, because now all what we've seen, all what we uh, touch what we hear, uh, what we sense, everything, all the senses are artificial. Like I see you through a medium. I hear you through a medium. It's not your belly. The voice is not coming from your belly. It's coming through a speaker. <laughs> huh? you, you, your face coming through a screen. So everything is artificial. What does it mean? It's not a refusal, it's not to refuse, it's actually to think about what and how we can do theater today when this is finished. How we can benefit out of this, not to come back, but how we can use this to do something else with theater on stage, with real audience, with physical audience, not virtual. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think... Um... This is a fundamental question. The theater is about the physical representation of a body right. on stage. And your work over well, all the decades was about the images that represent bodies, even dead bodies, bodies are from war. And, um, and uh, now, um, as you pointed out, you're so clearly, you know, where we and we all thought cyberspace is not real. Now it's the only kind of real thing in a way what we have, because what we do now, the moment this second is real. But as you right. said, it's representations of representations. So voice right. is not your voice. It's a, 
in, in but, a modified version of it. So the question is, yeah, what does that really mean? Is that fundamentally changing? So there's a moment where something pivots, change, revolves, revolution. Is this a moment that has a, a, a radical change that we understand better what you talked about and what will happen? I'm, I, 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 as I said, like these questions were before in my mind and, uh, uh, and I was all the time trying to do representations through medium, through mediums, even in the theater. Like when we talk about uh, uh, 33 RPM or like three posters, uh, looking for a missing employee, who's afraid of representations, Auto joy, all these, all these uh, uh, theater uh, works. Uh, the, the the actors were on stage, but they were addressing the, the the audience, who were also present in the theater, addressing them them through a mediator, which was the camera and the screen, and it was always questioning this idea, questioning what does it mean to do. Uh, a, a, a live streaming. What does it mean? Like we go for a live streaming in our apartments. We we want to see live. What does it mean that when we saw the the, the Gulf War on on live streaming on the TV? Where is the event? Is it there? Is it on the image in the TV? If I'm not on the TV. Do I exist or I'm not, I don't exist? So it's all these questions that coming. So on stage, if I am both an image and physically there, who is the most strong, uh, the stronger in, in, in the presence? Is it my image or me physically there? Where is the event is really happening? Is it where I'm standing physically or where I'm broadcasted uh, live, it's the image. So these are questions and there is no really, there's no answers. It's such <clears throat> questions just to make us think and be aware of all what's happening today, what we are going through today. And it's at the end, you do choices and, and you keep on your mind all of this in, in, in uh, uh, in your background here. But what I want to say is that when we do theater online, it is theater because one, one of uh, the main, or it's a performance or it's music, whatever, like it's, uh, it is because one of the main uh, essential uh, uh, things that makes theater or like uh, live performances is that it is now and here. So what's happening is now and here. Now we are doing it. This talk is doing it now and here, but still the now is much more complex than before because the now is like, it's different timing between all of us. I'm in Berlin, you are in New York, someone in, in uh, Beirut or whatever. And the here also, it's a complex. It's not also simple as, as it was before. The here is now, is the virtual world, but it's here in my place where I'm doing this talk. And it's here where you are sitting and where Carol sitting and where some people are listening to us. So it's, it is much more interesting to think about the here and about the now but it's still here and now but mm -hmm. how we can define the here and now accordingly to this situation and this is an interesting question to think about yeah but, you know so in um uh, 33 rpm there are no actors on stage but you're right, right. there's the anticipation of the presence of someone and there, there's the, the physical objects of his presence. But in the audience, we are together. And that's fundamentally right. different than what we're experiencing now. Because the liveness of the, spell, of the fellow spectators 
becomes an important mediating reality in terms of how we receive this uh, thing on stage, even right, without right. actors. So, right. um, you know, the, the, the felt presence of someone breathing, whether or not you know them, the, the movement through the, the theater environment to get to one's seat, the warmth of the bodies um, next to one, it's like it make me cry, all the things we miss, that this is, this is such a deep and, and um, not yet fully analyzed part of the theatrical experience that um, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what we can do with the, the lonely spectator now or the alone spectator. Um, in relationship to the, 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 you know, artistic inventions in this new medium? I think, uh, I think like uh, uh, the, 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 the Zoom or like the, the online uh, theater performances or performances uh, emancipate the, the audience a lot. I, I, this is my, okay, we miss, the, the temperature of, of, uh, of the mass that we are all together, we miss it. But at the same time, it, it it's, uh, liberate uh, the audience because now you can be, uh, you can stand up whenever you want while watching something live going on uh, and you can sleep or you can lie or you can, even you can go to the toilet or like, <laughs> and you don't bother anyone and, uh, and you are there and you are watching uh, and you can eat, you can drink. So there are a lot of uh, instructions and rules that are forbidden in theater when we are all together as audience. Now we are like free to do them. Uh, and of course, like when you know that it's here and now, and you are not able to see it online next day, it's completely different. And this is really, really, yes. yeah, yeah. this is really good. Then you have to, to, to make a decision. You stay with the performance online or you leave it. It's like in theater also, you, you can also say like, I don't want to go on with this uh, performance. I want to leave the theater, you leave but you are not allowed to come back. In online, you can leave and come out whenever you want. Nobody can control you. There's no control on the audience. Yeah, I get your point, but uh, <laughs> it, it kind of makes viewing theater then just like the rest of one's daily waking reality. It's definitely, you know, you have more options as a spectator where you can leave or come back or, you know, uh, eat a sandwich, but it, that's just like everything else, you know, then, it, then, then viewing theater becomes like looking at one's cell phone becomes like, like, uh, becomes so close to all one's other daily waking activities. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't that change our whole reception, um, uh, point of view. I mean, it's, it, there, the restrictions in a theater function somehow. I mean, that we experience the house, those of us together, which is different from the stage and there's some kind of uh, aisle or divide between them. That, that, uh, that's, an, you know, granted that's an older theatrical reality, but it still has something to offer us. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, we, 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 we win something, we lose something. I think, you know, but things go hand in hand. Right. But of course, we do miss the, um, the, the liveness and the, uh, you know, bodies just synchronizing their heartbeats and looking at something. Why I think Rabbi's work is also so significant and so important is what he said, you know, that we really, for at least a short moment, question, are we, there's an irritation um, or an uncomfortable, uncomfortable moment where we, we don't know what he's saying, what is real, what is not real. That, um, you know, why do we trust voices from a microphone or from a speaker more? When we do events at our legal center, when our participants speak over the mic, the body mic, it has more authority. We take it off, yeah. the sound is still there, the humans are, so yeah, that's so interesting too, but it sounds different. The same is, why is the camera of CNN that's, anchored in concrete 
you know, you believe it, but something shaking and but with less quality, all of a sudden you say, yeah, it's not so, who knows if that's true. You know, so what are we processing? How have we been conditioned? I think your work makes clear that we also construct our reality, as you said earlier, with the Trump reality, whatever. So that Richard Foreman once was at the seal and he said, isn't it strange that we normally don't see our heads if you walk around in the city of New York, you see everything. You also see your body and your hands. You don't see your head, but it's your head that processes everything. And our heads are VR sets. We, through our complex system of eyes and brain cells, we see colors, we see structures, and we combine it super fast together. A human supercomputer, the most, most dense protein structures in the known universe are in our brains and the eyes especially. So we create something, but we think it's real, how we see it. The butterflies see colors already 15 times or 100 times better than we do, so we cannot, or 1,000. Mm -hmm. We don't, wow. and I think what uh, Ravi's work does and what the theater of the real does, I think, is it perhaps for a moment slows down our process of reception that we realize we are processing things and the way we process, of course, you know, it has something to do how we see reality and that there are different angles we always do say. And I think it's something that works um, and that really um, opens up also this irritation. And, um, and um, most probably in an audience setting when people sit together, can talk afterwards or meet the artist. Perhaps it is even uh, stronger, but uh, there is also, I guess, I think uh, it has a function to work like this on the screen. So that would be my question to Ravi. Do you think that your work is as effective if you design it, if it comes on a Zoom performance, um, as, as if it is in a setting, as Carol says, with, even without actors, is that, or don't you, don't you need bodies watching it? Is the effect, that Brechtian effect of, uh, you know, distancing, uh, social distance the distance is that is do you need that or do you think it would work the same on screen uh i don't have like a definitive answer about this but i i would say like with uh, with the experience with the with the zoom with the online thing um we had like uh, audience more than uh, than in theater where we do which is like really unbelievable like come on what is this and really uh, it's really great in a way but also you miss something but uh, but at the same time as you said like you gain something at the same time but for me it's like always it's, it's something uh, conceptually in my uh, uh, thinking in my work in, in in art and in theater is that we should be very light in a way that we can adapt whatever situation, whatever case, to do theater and art. And this is something that I learned, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, by force <laughs> or by, by, by a need, because I, was, uh, I started during... Uh, uh, at the end of the civil war in Lebanon, I started to do to produce my own work, and till now, anyway, like our government, our state, they they don't have money for culture at all. Uh, maybe they have money, but they steal it or they don't put it for culture. Anyway, uh, we have if we want to do theater or art, it's like something volunteer. We are all volunteers. We are all amateur in this in this sense we are not professionals because we cannot live out from our uh, theater or our artwork in lebanon uh, so we all most of the theater makers the actors all of them most of them they have another work beside to to earn their uh, life to 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 continue their life so this has actually learned me how to produce work in a very low budget all the time. And I was producing my own works really with nothing. Uh, and I was so uh, happy with this because it, it gives me freedom with all my choices, freedom from the market, from, 
from any any authority and i can do works wherever i i i sometimes i did theater in my in in the salon of uh, the in the living room in my apartment uh, because i i could i couldn't afford or like some people they want to see a theater piece and i cannot play it anymore so i invite them and i do an adaptation and i do it there so it's this lightness this flexibility to do theater to do art with no borders to go on whatever is the, the case and whatever is, are the conditions and this is for me is important so now we do on zoom online okay but this is not the end uh -huh. it's like a period we go through it but then we will go back to some to, or like we go to something new and we 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 do things i i carry myself and i go on and i see where i don't know it, it sounded very optimistic <laughs> I'm not a man optimistic. Go on anyway. something new. I'm trying to think like, hmm, sounds good, but <laughs> oh, it's so. Um, so, did you have anything you wanted to show us? We chatted a bit about your um, assembling some photographs of your work. Um, maybe, maybe I would like to to show you something. How? Uh, wait, no, no. Where is the share screen? I'm not allowed to share the screen. The host disabled, uh, so you have to. I cannot oh. do it. Uh, is is Andy a Thea? Can you? Yeah, Andy enable? has to to. Uh, yeah, can you enable Rebia to yeah. share screen? Of course. Okay, good. She's going to enable you. Yes. So uh, no, not yet. So what I want to show you is just like to go through. I prepared something. To go through very quickly uh, the 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 scenography of uh, my my works, uh, how it uh, it developed through okay. the years. Yeah. Just uh -huh. to, 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 uh, to desktop share. Okay, now you 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 see my uh, right. Mm -hmm. So you see my desktop, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. It's, it's all good. Okay, so this is the early works. You can see, like, it's not about. So it's like uh, it's like very classical uh, way of thing. Like the audience are here, and here are the theater, the stage, and here are the performers. This is how it was. And then in uh, in nineteen ninety eight, I did uh, this piece called "Enter, Sir. We are waiting for you outside." Actually, I put a wall here. Uh, sorry, uh, I put a wall here. This is a wall to block the perspective, uh, the depth of the stage, because I wanted to do a flat theater, a 2D theater. And there was a camera here, as you see. The performers were sitting on chairs, and the image is going through the camera, through a monitor. And then we talk to the audience through the screen. Hmm? And then in, in three posters, I was behind the wall. And the camera is behind the wall. And the, the audience cannot see me, as you see. Then I speak to them through the monitor. So this is how it was. And then here it becomes like this so they cannot see me me and then we open the door they see me behind but and then looking for a missing employee i jumped and i sit within the audience and the camera with me and then my image is transmitted here broadcasted here and people see me sitting here but i'm also sitting with them Hmm. And then in, uh, in 2008, I was supposed to go to Japan, but I could not make it. So we decided to do it through Skype and they agreed. So I was in Beirut, sitting in Beirut. 
And it was screened on a screen here, projected on a screen, and audience are still in the theater watching me all together. But I was in Beirut. And then in 2020, we did this, make me stop smoking. So the theater, as you see, it's empty now, all empty. And I'm in, at home in Berlin and the audience all together alone, as you put it, Carol, alone together <laughs> uh, everywhere. So just like this is to go through, through it uh, very quickly with this. Uh, yeah, it's quite, quite stunning. And, uh... Uh, so uh, if you would like, maybe I, I would like to show uh, one thing. It's just like a video, uh, which, which I, I would love to, 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 to show to you. It's a very old work. It's just about uh, forgetting and remembering and about uh, telling. So just like. Watch this one minute or something like this. Okay, thank you. So good. Mm. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the the last film clip that you showed, what work is that from? Uh, the the old house. It's from uh, it's uh, from uh, Make Me Stop Smoking. Oh, okay. But uh, it was also shown in. It was also shown as a separate work, as a one-channel installation in uh, in, uh, in exhibitions, which I I I like to show it to to give an introduction or a key to the works that people will see afterward. Right, right, right. right. You, uh, thank you so much, Rabia. This has been truly thank amazing. You. Um, yeah. And do you have any? Closing comments, Frank or Rubier. Um, I'm just kind of like after I see your work, it, it's um, so provocative, and the the brain space that it makes is really marvelous as part of the deep experience yeah. of work. Thank and you. Carol. This question to Rabi: What inspires you at the moment? What do you look at? What do you read? What do you listen to? Or what artists do you follow? Who do you feel has something to say uh, no specific things actually i'm i'm in a phase where i'm uh, trying uh, actually to capture what we are what we are going on through now to think about uh, i'm much more now to to go into video works now uh, i think it's uh, it's uh, it's a medium that might be good for share with 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 audience online better than doing theater online for now for me I don't know uh, to do videos and that can be play whenever you want wherever at any time 
but also I'm still interested in this idea how to do things uh, with a very low budget. It's something very essential for me to get out from this capitalist, uh, uh, from this also liberal uh, system and the market that are like, it's like uh, it's it's a burden on 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 us. Like even like, if you want like to apply for like funds from uh, from the state or from wherever, like you have to go through a long process with administrations, etc., which take all your energy. So how can you you skip all this and just go to the essence, to go to the core, and do the work? And how we can do this? And this is a question. So I'm, I'm still insisting on and struggling to go with this idea. And I don't believe that, oh, I don't have money now, so I, don't, I cannot work. I cannot realize my ideas because I don't have the budget. I, we have to find a way, all of us, to achieve our ideas, even if we don't have uh, uh, yeah, the, no, the, the, the budget that we, 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 we dream of. This is an important, I think, also closing statement, also for young artists and students. I know many of them listen here. What he said about, he said, I'm an amateur in a way, but not because his work is not brilliant. It's because it's not paid for it. And that amateur, amateur it comes from the Latin of amare, amore. You do something out of love because you love to do it. Yes. And professional means... You know, you're paid to do it on Broadway, you know, you're whatever, you're paid, and then people say, you're a professional actor, but who's, again, your question, who's the real actor, who's the real theater artist? When it comes to real love, we all want to think we are loved because out of love, and not because it's professional, that you pay someone to make love to you or be in love, um, and actually we would be horrified, you know, and um, so um, I think this is an important and, uh, statement for, yeah? No, just like if you may, uh, maybe like just to say like, and a very, very good example is your talks, what you're doing is like a very good example, which I think like it's very, very, very low budget and you do yeah. very yeah. amazing things. Sure. Actually, it's a zero budget or what? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. And we do do something. And I think this is important to, to do your work and to, to do your art and not to wait as I think Susan Sontag says till the society kisses you on the forehead and institutions accept you and you are paid professionally and then you're an artist and now you say I'm an, I do work and um, I think uh, Morgan Jeunesse once said in a Seattle talk you people ask me but how do I become a director and she says you know the only thing is you wake up one morning you say I'm a director you have to work hard and exactly work hard. And you have to be good. This is how you do art. And I think this is something what you show us in all the complexity of the work. It is some, something that can be done. And Corona now forces us. There is normally no space, no money in New York City, but now there is no money. And we don't have the space. Even if we had access to it, we can't get into it. But uh, this is uh, something to really think about why we do this and uh, why we are motivated and to find ways and to adapt uh, to a situation like an actor in a scene of a play adapts to the scene he or she is in, you know, in that moment. And now we are in a special moment. And, and your work it really is so brilliant. And, uh, and I uh, hope one day you will come back uh, to, to New York. We can see your work, have a drink, also have a Seattle talk where you'll be with Carol at NYU. Um, it is uh, of real importance. So really, really thank you for taking our talk so serious. That's important thank you so to much. hear from you and to listen to you. Carol, maybe say a bit about tomorrow with Nick. Um, well, <laughs> we're meeting with him tomorrow afternoon and, and Nick is uh, um, stands behind a lot of the verbatim theater in the UK and uh, which has historically had its own unique approach to understanding political events, especially in the UK, and kind of reformulating them into in theatrical terms. And um, Nick has also been an incredibly creative producer. So um, I, I, you know, at this particular moment in time, I think, you know, one thing that Lola Arias did is seek out new models of of production, of producing work, 
and that all the collaboration between the theaters in Germany to produce the work of, to produce her series online becomes a, a very important model. Um, I mean, I, I know that I understand it's important to create um, uh, no matter what one faces. At the same time, I just want to add that, you know, we, we value the thought of philosophers. We value the thought novelists and um, part of the way, at least in a capitalist society, value is recognized or sustained. Let's take it out of that we sustain what we value is by enabling it to live. And enabling it to live means in part giving it sustenance. So I'm not talking about surplus value. I'm talking about, you know, enabling artists and the thought that is so, that they produce, that's so important to our society to live. And um, in the invention of new forms of producing, um, hopefully going forward, will take us to new places. Yeah, that's true. We need to support art and they need yeah. to be able to, to, to have a life. So thank you so much again tomorrow. Thank you so much, Rudy. It's so good to spend time thank with you. Thank you so much. Thank so you. We can from the Tricycle Theatre in London. Next week, we will focus on dramaturgy with uh, Peter Akesal, my colleague, and also a dramaturg, who's working on a new book on dramaturgy right now. He's going to tell us about writing. He's in the process of doing one. And Catania from Lincoln Center Theatre just finished a book on dramaturgy. It's going to come out the next year. She's going to come with Sydney Mahone. Um, and um, and then we will have Sebastian Kaiser, who was uh, Frank Kastorf's uh, dramaturg at the Volksbühne Berlin. So um, we look at, at that part of theater. But uh, again, this was a brilliant uh, a com co a conversation with, because of what you said, uh, Rabbi. And uh, thank you for, for taking your time sharing with us, Carol. Really, thank you. And thanks to HowlRound and everybody. Stay safe. Uh, stay tuned in. And um, we hope to, to, to have you with us tomorrow and uh, next week. So thank you to Berlin and uh, hope you're going to have a good dinner tonight. And uh, really our gratitude to, to, for you to, to share your work. And now we know it's complicated. It's online. It's life, you know, as you say. So, um, but I think it's something very special for everybody. It helps us to, to understand better where we are in and this kind of shared suffering, which we, we all have. Um, um, the, the experience at the moment. So thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.